Come on in, sir. Let's talk about your case. Let's talk about this fender bender. Um, there wasn't any bending of either vehicle's fenders. Okay. What happened was I impacted the plaintiff's bumper. Fair enough. And damaged it, which is why I was cited with Motor Vehicle Code 3131 Section A. Do I need to go over the code with you? No, sir. That won't be necessary. You know, let me ask you this. Can you just run me through what happened on the day of the accident so I better understand? Okay, if you insist. At 10.05 a.m., I opened up my eyelids after 12 hours of hibernation. I then sat up at a 90-degree angle in bed. No, sir. What I mean is, can you explain what happened from your perspective at the time of the accident? Okay, then why didn't she just specify that? I should have, sir, but I'll never make that mistake again. By the way, am I paying you by the hour? No, sir. Your insurance pays me. Well, thank the imaginary and you know what? for that. I'm going to recommend to your insurance company we settle for the whole policy. And why is that? Because if we went to trial, not a single juror would like you. Women of Reddit, what's your cringy nice guy story? A few years before I met my husband, he decided to go to a party. He gets there and some random girl walks up to him, says you're cute and kisses him. This amused him, so he started chatting with her. While chatting, he notices a very angry, short man standing next to her. The man is scowling at my husband and it's making him uncomfortable. He can tell the guy is pissed at the attention girl is giving him, and it's just not worth it, so he stops talking to random girl, turns away, and starts walking to another room. It's at this point husband feels short man punch him in the back. When he turns around, short man is running away and actually runs out of the house and never returns to the party. Husband laughs it off, cause it wasn't even a hard punch. But then somebody notices husband is bleeding, and there is a hole in his shirt. The short fucker hadn't punched him, he stabbed him. Random girl saw this all go down and was pretty mortified. Turns out the short dude was obsessed with her, they were best friends, and he accompanied her everywhere. The knife was pretty small, so it didn't do any real damage. But he still has the scar. Update 2. Hi everyone. Sorry it's been 3 months. I have been really busy with work. Sarah is still pregnant, due at the end of August, with two babies, one boy and one girl. My husband and I have started to try and have a family of our own. No success yet, but we are not worried, it's only been 2 months. When we were in my country, we were buying artwork and small furniture from my country to put in the nursery of our future baby, so it could have my culture too. Sarah and her husband bought some things too for their house, and my mom was in town with Sarah one day when we did a trip they didn't want to do and bought some things for us. She told Sarah it was for the nursery for our future baby. When Sarah heard what our idea for our nursery was with my culture, she decided she wanted her nursery to be like that and bought almost everything we bought. We didn't say anything because we thought she was just buying for her house and for friends, souvenirs, etc. Some time passed after everything happened at the wedding and the honeymoon, and Sarah called me to see if I could go to a store where we live and look at some baby things for her because they don't have that store. I said yes and spent almost two hours with her on the video call showing her things, taking pictures, and saying we could get it and mail it to her if she needed anything. So we were on good terms. Then a week ago, she posted on Instagram her nursery in progress, and it was exactly what I said I wanted. The theme isn't something very common, but it's my culture. Think like dragons for China or geisha for Japan. A very big part of the culture, but not usually a baby theme. I saw it and got mad. I showed it to my husband, and he was mad too, but he said, let's just give it a few days, and then talk about it again, and then we can decide what to do. So I said okay and waited. Sarah called us a couple of days later to tell us the name she decided for her babies. The boy's name is very sweet, a mixture of a family name on Matt and Sarah's side. The girl's name is where the problem is. Her first name is very pretty, we love it, but her middle name is my husband's name that we said we wanted to use if we had a son. It's not a general neutral name like Taylor, it's a boy's name like Jonathan. My husband said, that's my name, and she knew we wanted to use it. She said it's also their uncle's name, and that's who it's after. My husband kept saying, but it's my first name, and it's a boy's name, and we are still going to use the name if we have a son. This is where Sarah lost her mind. She got so mad and started yelling that cousins cannot have the same name and she chose it first. My husband just screamed, it's my name. Finally, Sarah just hung up after she said she thought my husband would be happy that she is naming the baby the same name as him. Again, we gave it a couple of days, and then I had a talk with my husband and said I am still very upset about the theme. It feels like Sarah always gets what she wants, no matter what other people think, feel, or are affected. I told him it's like the camel's back broke from all the straws over the last years. I told him I was going to call Sarah and tell her how I feel and just talk about it. He said okay but told me to wait one more day so I wouldn't be very angry when I called. I called my mom and told her what I told my husband, and she was furious. She pointed out that Sarah also showed me and my husband things she thought would look good in our nursery with the theme we said we wanted, so she knew exactly what we wanted to do. I took a couple of hours to get my brain ready and called Sarah to talk to her about it. When I was talking to Sarah, I made sure to tell her that the nursery wasn't the main issue, that it was just the last thing I could take. 
I told her it feels like everything is always about her, and how she wants it, and screw everybody else. I said it's been almost four years of that, and the nursery was the last straw. I made it a point to talk to her nicely, not raise my voice, and use kind words, but she went off. She said a nursery theme isn't something you can own and that I actually copied her. I told her it's my culture, so I don't know how that works. She called me such bad names and cursed me out, and I told her if she didn't stop, I was going to hang up. She kept saying nasty things, and I told her again, but she kept going, so I hung up after I told her to lose my number and not contact me ever again. I haven't had any other contact from her, and neither has my husband. It feels like a weight off my shoulders. I wish her the best, but she cannot be a part of my life if she is acting like this. I also removed her from all socials. So that's that, Sarah and I are done. My husband is low contact, only if she calls or messages him, which is never. Her parents are shocked at me, but I said I'm done. Her mom asked if I am going to tell Sarah when I get pregnant, and I said no. She is welcome to tell her, and my husband can tell her if he wants, but I am not speaking to Sarah again. Sarah had her shower, and I sent two outfits for the babies because I bought them before the phone call, and she texted in a group chat to say thank you, and I just liked the message. I told my husband that if I am home, Sarah is not welcome in my house. That's probably the last update from me. I don't think anything else will happen now that I am no contact. Reading a cringe comment from Reddit aloud. Enjoy. Hello. <laughs> I noticed you have a profile picture of a very beautiful but also intelligent looking female. And I am under the presumption that this goddess is you? <laughs> it is quite astonishing to see a female here in the r slash Eminem subreddit. I am quite popular around here in this subreddit, so if you require guidance, please throw me a mention. I will assist you at any hour, day or night. And before you are mistaken, I do not seek your hand in a romantic way. Although I am not opposed in the event that you are interested in me, as many women often are. <laughs> I am a man of standard, and I do not bow to just any female that comes my way, unlike my peers. So rest assured that I will not be in the way of your gaming and socializing experience. Consider me a player too, a companion, a partner, and perhaps we can enjoy some video games together sometime. I see you play mini games. <laughs> I am a mini game aficionado, so I would be happy to assist you in games. Platonically, of course. Unless you, like many others, change your mind on that. I look forward to our future together. As friends, of course. So that comment is actually making fun of an actual message someone typed up. I'll show you it. It's actually one of the videos pinned on my channel. This is the Discord message that um, inspired that post. Basically, he just reworded it to do r slash Eminem. But uh, yes, this is inspired by true events, unfortunately. You can give that a read there. Or you can go watch the video pinned on my profile. <laughs> Anyways, have a good one. What is the cringiest thing you have ever romantically done? She was my first ever girlfriend. Crazy beautiful, awesome sense of humor, we got along really well and all that. We were in high school at the time, working at a summer job together, and I had zero experience with ladies. Before our first date I asked some friends what to do for the date. They said dinner and a movie. That seemed pretty good since all I knew about dating was what I saw on TV, which was usually dinner and a movie. So we head to a cute French place then we see the notebook. By the end of the movie we're playing footsie, heads on shoulders, my arms wrapped around her, just enjoying her perfume I can't believe it. Drop her off, gave her a box of M&Ms with an origami rose inside, she had told me she loved chocolate, I called her a few days later, all that. I ask her out again, and away we go. Cringe one, I took her to see the notebook, again. She's cool with it though, I was able to get the tickets ahead of time so it was a surprise for her when the movie started. She snuggled right up to me. It was awesome cringe too, as I'm dropping her off at home, I brutally bomb our first kiss, I stopped the car at the last stop sign before her house, then pursed my lips real tight and smacked them into her face without anything leading up to it. But she's an incredible lady, and doesn't mind. Drop her off, everything's good, and we're talking for hours on the phone every day at this point. Cringe 3, before going to another movie on date 3, we're eating ice cream and her best friend calls her cell phone. Now, I wanted to make the impression I was the funniest thing in the history of the earth to this best friend, so I say let me answer it. And she obliges, to her horror. I answer in a high-pitched voice and start talking about tiny little elves who took the phone and I awkwardly laugh, she isn't laughing. About a week later she asks for time and space. I had no idea what that really meant, so I tried to win her over. Oh man, this is where I poured it out big time. Cringe 4, at the place we worked, I found her car and put a dozen roses around it, each with a note that had something I loved about her. Cringe 6, since that didn't work I asked Google how to get the girl of your dreams back. 
I pasted in a bunch of ideas from results into an email draft, which for some reason I addressed to her. And then clicked send out of habit. This was before the days of undo send. I emailed Yahoo Mail, desperate for them to delete it from her inbox. I tried guessing her password. But the inevitable came she replied wanting to know what was going on. I played it off like my brother asked for advice on the topic and I typed her address in by accident. She wasn't talking to me after this point, but she was nice enough to recognize at work I was hurt or confused or just plain stupid. So she tries stopping me a few days later on my way out to my car, which takes us to cringe 6, I totally ignore her outstretched hand, and walk past her loudly singing I held the pieces of my soul, I was shattered and I wanted you to come and make me whole while I walked to my car. That was the last chance I think I ever had. Soon after she went on vacation with her family to Mexico, and when she came back she made one last trip to our work, with a male co-worker who had quit a few weeks earlier. I see you. <coughs> so bad. Hey, can you help me? I think I've been stabbed. It doesn't look like you've been stabbed. You have been stabbed. Can't believe people on this side. Oh my god. I think it's close to an artery. Uh, sir, can you help me? Knife to meet you. <laughs> sir, can you help me? Hopefully someone stabilizes him soon. Oh my god. Can we get back to the issue here? How'd you get stabbed? I think, I think if I could just get some help right now, that'd be great. I don't really know what, why we have to. Probably some sort of gang related thing. Gang activity here is the third highest in the state. <laughs> what? Actually, it's the second highest. Common mistake. Guys, please. You know, there's actually a website that compiles all the data. You can see it on r slash data's beautiful. Here's the link. Hi, Wyatt. I'm Agent Ron Harris at the FBI. Can I chat with you for a second? Thank you so much for identifying yourself. Never would I have guessed with the letters FBI literally printed on your jacket. <laughs> Glad to see you have a sense of humor, Wyatt. You know, you're a real lucky guy. If those officers didn't find that hole in the basement, it would have been a much different story. It was not a hole. This is not a reenactment of some mediocre Shia LaBeouf film. I was actually held captive in a dry well. Right. Well, you're very lucky, Wyatt. Uh, we have reason to believe that this guy who kidnapped you is actually a serial killer. And Apparently you missed some days at the academy. Otherwise, you would know that a serial killer is defined as a person who kills three or more people over a month, period. You do realize that I, a sole individual, am still alive. Well, Wyatt, we've actually found six more bodies so far buried in the backyard of this home. Well, that is a mere assumption, and I add a logical fallacy. You forget that I observed this serial killer for over 10 days, and from my observations, he does not have the physical dexterity to subdue six people. Really? He kidnapped if you? If this truly is your evidence, then I'm going to have a field day testifying as a witness at trial. Wait, wait a second. Are you saying that you would testify in favor of the defense? and help a guy who kept you in a well for 10 days? Just to prove a point? If I need to correct factual inaccuracies and blatant butchering of the law, then yes, it will be necessary. But Wyatt, we saved your ass. Uh, you know what, fuck this. Hey Bob. Yeah, what's going on, Ron? Give him my two weeks notice. What? What the hell are you talking about? I'm done, Bob. I can't do this anymore. <laughs> Hello, sir. You need help finding anything? Do I need help finding? Yeah. Do you need help? Yes. I actually require a map. I need help navigating through a store that is approximately 1,600 square feet. Oh. Uh, uh. That was a joke. Got it. Thank you for helping me understand that, sir. I actually do have a question. Uh-huh. Do you have any apparel here that is not meant to be worn by millennial hipsters that are living in squalor? Mm, oh boy. Yeah, sorry to disappoint you, sir, but I don't think we do. Going against my better judgment, I will be purchasing this, since it does go with another outfit. Of course, However, a stolen valor. I will need to sanitize yeah. this, since it's probably infested with mites, like everything else in this store. We don't have mites here, sir, but I do agree there's nothing worse than a pest. No, I'm pretty sure I can come up with things that are worse. No, sir, you're wrong. There is nothing in this world that is more annoying than a squeaky, irritating little pest.